Welcome to another on Enter Flash tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to use this amazing tool, the Bone tool and the Bind tool, and telling you what they're for. And I'm going to try to show you as many uh, things that you can do with it and the time provided. So, what I've done before I've started this tutorial recording, I've created a symbol. And what I'm going to do is just drag that stem symbol out to stage. Uh, with this symbol, I am going to duplicate it a few times by holding the alt key and just dragging. Holding the alt key, quick way to duplicate your movie clips or any other object inside of Flash. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to select the bone tool or you can press X to select it. As soon as you start to create the bone tool or, or bone structure of your object, it uh, creates a new uh, armature layer which you'll see right down there armature layer alright and what you want to do is just you want to start from one and to another and so forth and you want to continue to do this and you want to touch one another from one joint to another and you continue to do this until you're satisfied right now my bone joints are this orange color if you want to if you want to change this color, it's really simple. Just double click and you have your outline color. I'm going to choose green and they'll change to green. That's just a little tip right there how to change certain colors of things. Um, moving on, now with this bone structure, I'm able to do some pretty fancy things. I'm going to go to my se selection tool and with my selection tool, I can move my object around. Now it has uh, a structure. Which is really cool. Any place I go, it it you know it it can only move but so far. And you can animate this by moving or increasing the number of frames on the timeline. I press F5, and throughout I will go back frames and animate it, which will create a keyframe and so forth and so forth, and do some sort of animation. Really simple animation, nothing special. All right, let's get into some more things of this bone tool. I gotta go a little faster. There's a lot of things to cover with this. Now, let's say you want to extend or change the position of one of your objects. Say they're too close for your liking. By holding the control key, you can move around and increase the size of your bone. Now they're really far apart. And I have the selection tool and uh, by using the selection tool and holding control, the control key, you can extend or uh, change the position of bones. Very important, very vital. One other thing you may be wondering to yourself is how do you, uh, how are you able to um, change the position of where it's anchored? Well, that's it's a little complicated. Not really. What you have to do is go to your free transform tool. Short for cut for that is uh, Q. And all you have to do is change this uh, rotation point or anchor point. And wherever you change this, that's where the bone joint will go into. I don't know why there isn't like some sort of way to just change it up easily. I don't know. Ask uh, the people who made Flash. Alright, so now if I click back on it, you'll see that the uh, the points have changed uh, from wherever I've changed it from the transformation tool. Good thing to know, cool thing to know. Alright, moving on. Uh, what are some other things you can do with this amazing tool? Let's go to the selection tool and what I'll do is select one of my joints and in the joints they have properties. What I have enabled right currently is the rotation. I can also enable transformation of the X. Let me move this over here. In the properties of the bone tool, you have uh, joint rotation, uh, X transformation, Y transformation, which allows you to move around your joints that you that you selected. So I selected the first one, which means that, and I've enabled it, which means that when I'm doing my animation it can um, it can move uh, via the X now you may be thinking well 
uh, wasn't that wasn't I doing that before? Well, no, you were just simply rotating it. Now you have the ability to move it around. So that's just one thing to know. Another thing to know, not just enabling that, but let's go back into the properties. All right. Let's go back in the properties. And you can also um, constrain it. Oh. You can constrain it, meaning you can set how far or how long or wide things can go. And uh, once you do that, you'll get this uh, this kind of boxy looking thing here. So what it means is now I can only uh, move within that that set radius or that set that set line that was just created there. So this is putting limitations on your, the movement of your object. This is important when you're making like a hand. A hand should only go back but so far. So you know that's something to mess with. That's what it's for. That's why it's there. That's in your properties. So okay we've uh, learned how to do all that. Now with the selection tool I can just select any of these items and simply press delete to remove it. And uh, that's how you do it. <laughs> Pretty simple nothing really amazing. I'm just gonna delete all what I've created. Move the frame. Now I want to get to the bind tool because as you can see there was a lot just in that um, bind tool and there's and I didn't really give you a uh, in-depth perspective but I gave you as much as I could with the time provided. What I'm gonna do now is just create a simple uh, rectangle with the rectangle tool. This is nothing special but with the bone tool it will be special, it will be awesome. And this is where the bind tool comes in, but right now I'm just going to make a bone structure here really quickly. Uh, one thing that you want to do with the bone stru structure that I would recommend is that with the bone structure, I would tell you to always uh, keep the lock on this magnet, which snaps to your objects. So always keep that on, it makes life a lot easier. So anyway, back to this. Now it becomes uh, some. It just becomes Play-Doh. It's so cool. You can imagine what you can do with this. Uh, and uh, some of the same um, properties apply to this. You click on one of the bones, and you get in the properties, the enable, and so forth, the constraints, all that jazz. Uh, what's different about uh, with a uh, with a shape is that the bind tool and I'll explain this bind tool alright with the bind tool let's click on a point any of these points and these points represent uh, uh, the vector points inside of flash so every time I picked on click on a vector point a uh, a bone is illuminated so what this tool does is it tells you exactly which bone is connected to which vector point and if you want to change that vector point or add you can hold control to add more uh, bones to that single vector point or remove it by holding control so this is what it's for um, you want to control like say if you want this bone to control like this vector point right you want not that bone you want this bone over here to control it and not that one. By holding control you change it. So if I mess with this bone it's gonna affect this vector. Why do you want to do that? That's beyond me. Um, I have no idea why you want to use it but it's in it's uh, I'm not a big on animation so uh, it's not really right to ask me but this is what it's for. That's the whole reason for the bind tool good to know if you want to change the points in which they act maybe 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 you're making a hairline that's a good example you're making hair and you want the hair to like move around but because this is the hairline you don't want any of these vectors to be active so that was my tutorial quickly helping you out on uh, animating with the bone tool and the bind tool thanks for watching on it thanks for watching on interflash if you like these tutorials uh, comment rate and subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. So, thanks a lot. And if you really want to show your support, go to my website on enterflash.blogspot.com where you can uh, click on an ad or two to put a few pennies in my pocket. Thanks for watching on Enter Flash.